Hey everyone, welcome to Furniture Flipping Teacher. Last week we showed you the bedroom makeover. In previous videos, we've gone to the bathroom and the kitchen, but this week is all about the sunroom. Let's take a look back at where we started and then check out how it is now. So this is the sunroom, you guys. There's 15 windows in here. For now, what we're planning on keeping the original windows. Eventually, we might decide to change them out just for a little bit better of keeping the cold air out and the warm air out. I'm planning on keeping all of the windows, window sills, the white color, but obviously it does need to be updated. We're gonna be filling in all of the cracks, the holes, cleaning it all up and painting it white again. As far as the ceiling goes, I love how it comes to a little A-frame at the top here. And I have an idea to do shiplap across the top of the entire ceiling. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on how feasible that truly is, but I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that that will be possible. We'll get a new ceiling fan in here. I wanna have some raffia style curtains that can go up and down. That way that this room can also kind of double as another sleeping area. If there's a couple more people than just fit in the one bedroom, then we wanna have a pull-out couch or a sleeper sofa that allows accommodations for more than just those two people. Up here, this triangular wall that's pretty much on its own, I'm thinking of having that teal color again so that I can bring it into this room as well. And then of course that flooring will be the same throughout of that kind of darker white oak color flooring. I did forget to mention that one of our main plans is to have tons and tons of plants throughout this entire room because it's gonna be full of sun. So here at the top, I've got my shiplap ceiling, and then those are the raffia curtains that I was talking about. Here's the teal sleeper sofa that I found through Castlery. We're not sure exactly on the sofa just yet, but that's just one that I found that matched that same color. And then it's got those white oak floors the white walls, and then that teal accent color at the top of the ceiling. Let's get this carpet up now. This carpet is a little bit more difficult to cut. We got the carpets up. Now it's time to get rid of them, get them out of our way. And we're gonna see what's underneath this padding. Cross your fingers for more hardwood floors. More hardwood, more hardwood. All right, here we go. Oh no! It's plywood! Blah. Disappointed. We need to remove all of the tack strips and all of the staples that were holding the carpet down. So I'm gonna get started. I've got a hammer, I've got a pry bar, and we're gonna get to work. step to start making this place look somewhat better is to start scraping the windows 
whoever painted them last really just didn't care they got paint all over the glass and then plus some of the areas are quite dirty so we're also going to be cleaning all of that up caulking everything and then getting ready to paint them a much brighter white spackling and filling in some of these holes my main goal is to get them all ready for tomorrow so that I can actually prime tomorrow is all finished up I am ready to tape but I don't think you guys want to sit through me taping up all the windows so in three two one it's time to prime and as you can see during that time when the tape was up in the air the window broke because we had a quick little five minute hail storm and it decided to bust one of our windows so it looks like we'll be getting at least the new glass in this window here. But like I said, it is time to prime. I'm gonna be using Bin Shellac Face Primer so that I can cover up all of the dirtiness that's going on around here. Let's get to it. where I still need to go back with the spackling and the caulking, but now that we've got the primer on, those spots really pop out, so I'll be able to see that. So next up is to continue filling the rest of the holes, and then we will move on to the first coat of paint. I got all of the windows covered and then we've got this guy and this is the window that broke in the hailstorm. So I just called a glass company and I am going to remove it, bring it to them so that they can replace the glass and then hopefully we can have this installed um, pretty quick here so that we don't have a huge opening in our sunroom up here for too long. Unfortunately, this happened after I caulked everything, so I'm gonna just use my um, box cutter here, slice the caulking, 
And in order to get this window out, I have to get this trim off um, because of the way that the window is put together. So that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. This is what we're using for the window trim. It is just ultra pure white. I wanted the trim to pop, and when I do the walls, it'll be a little bit of a different white, not so bright. This room has pretty much been our catch-all for literally everything throughout the makeover process. So gotta get everything cleaned out so that we can actually get some work done in there. Gotta get this ceiling fan down and I've never taken a ceiling fan down before or hung one, honestly. So I think we're in for a little lesson. Um, I'm hoping this is actually tall enough for me. <laughs> I'm a little short. Um, but maybe Neiman will step in and help me out. We gotta get this down because I'm gonna paint the ceiling and we'll also be replacing this fan since it's a little outdated. Two. Gotta turn off the electricity in the sunroom, of course. Luckily it's labeled nicely, so we were able to do it super easily. Fan will shut off now. That way we're all safe. That's most important, right? While he continues to mess with that fan, I am going to be taping off some of the areas. I already taped off all of the outlets and stuff. Walls are wiped down, so that means it's time to paint. Of course, we're gonna be using the same color white that I've been using throughout, which is called Greek Villa by Sherwin-Williams. So I'm gonna get my paint poured in, mask on, and we'll get to going.
right, two complete coats are done on the walls. I did the second one off camera, and now we move on to the ceiling. So I am going to be taking this plastic with tape already lined on it just to tape off around this wall so that when I'm doing the ceiling paint, nothing gets too close to the wall that I just painted. They're both white, but a little bit different whites. Finished up with the ceiling, a couple of coats, and while that's drying, I'm gonna prep for painting that triangle. We got the room painted, it's time to install the flooring. It's time to put the baseboards on. We're gonna finish up some painting. We're gonna change out some outlets. So let's go ahead and get started. Everything's dry fitted now, so that means that I get to come down and start to paint.
to nail in these quarter rounds. I got them all placed where they need to go so I can just go around the room, boom, 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 nail them in. all of these nail holes because nobody wants to have all these nails showing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some spackling and just wipe a little bit on there to fill the hole. Once it's dry, sand it just a bit and then paint over it one more time. To do a little bit more touch-ups on the ceiling. So since we already have the floor down, I'm putting paper down that way we don't drip any huge drops onto the floor that we just laid. All right, so time to replace some outlets. Got my caulk gun here, and we're gonna caulk some baseboards. Really the last thing that we've got to do in this room except for like decorate and furnish and stuff like that is to get it all cleaned up. this thing got two rugs that we're gonna start with this this room is a little bit of an awkward long shape and I didn't want to spend a fortune on like one big long rug that would fit in here so I decided to go with two five by seven rugs that are the same and we'll just have a little space in between here um, in the entry but I wanted to have some rugs to at least ground the furniture that's going to go in here. So we picked these up at Nebraska Furniture Mart. I thought that they went really nicely with our accent color in the whole Airbnb. Hi right, guys, I couldn't have an Airbnb without the classic mid-century modern velvet chairs. And I wanted a little bit of another pop of color or two. So I chose to grab this gold chair that I've actually had for some time now and put it in here in our Airbnb. And then I also recently found that orange chair back there. Actually, I just went and picked it up this morning and it actually just went 
along perfect with the tones in here. I love the kind of jewel tones that they are. And I was gonna make a little living room space over here with two chairs, got a swivel rocker, and then just one with the legs and a, some rollers. And then also I thrifted a coffee table that I'm gonna put right here as well. So this coffee table I also thrifted for $10. And so that means that the furniture, at least in this corner, was all thrifted or found on Facebook Marketplace. This one was 60. 50 and 10. So all in at $120 for three pieces of really nice furniture. I will take it. Okay, next up, we are going to be putting together a little couch that also pulls out and uh, will allow for two more people to sleep here. We know that um, a pullout couch or a sofa bed isn't the most comfortable, but we really looked and looked for this one and we actually came across one that is, I laid down on it and it was quite comfortable for it being a sofa couch. It's no birch bed like we have in the bedroom, but this will be perfect for its use for a couple of nights for an Airbnb, people will be able to sleep two more people. And then for us, that also allows us to expand our options here. So I'm, I'm unsure yet if I'm gonna put the couch along this wall or along the window wall, but we'll see. We're gonna start getting it all put together. Luckily it came in a box because getting it up the stairs as a whole piece would have been very challenging because this is an old house and the doorways and the stairs don't really allow for much big things to come up here. day of this sunroom makeover which I'm super excited about we just thought that the walls were a little bit bare so I took to the internet and I wanted to find some Omaha art um, whether it be from a local artist or like of Omaha itself just so that we could incorporate some of that in our Airbnb um, I found some online and so she actually had her own shop so I went to her shop and I was able to find a few of the neighborhoods that are in Omaha and that are close to our Airbnb. So we've got Field Club, which is right down the street, Exarbin, which is also right down the street, Blackstone, which is down the street, and then Hanscom Park, which is actually right where this Airbnb is located. So I am going to put these in some frames I picked up from Target and put two over there, two over there, and we'll see this room kind of come together just a little bit more. You guys ready to check it out? Come on in.
Ah, oh, we have come such a long way, you guys. I am just so thrilled with how this room turned out. It is not so dingy anymore with that carpet. Everything is just lighter and brighter, including the floors and the windows and the walls and everything. And then the furniture just really brings it all together. And I'm just so stoked with the way that it all turned out. I think, again, this was one of my mood boards in real life. There's a few different changes, of course, because there always will be, but overall, the, the mood board was exactly this look. The main purpose of this room is sort of two, actually. We've got a little gathering area slash rec room, hangout spot, but then also this couch pulls out to basically be the size of a queen bed. So that is plenty of room for two more people to sleep. So this place will sleep four total people, which I think will cater to more people and allow more people to be able to rent out our space. I love the way that the uh, Omaha art kind of just brought it all together. The walls aren't so bare anymore. And we also added in some Omaha books so that people can see uh, the different spots around Omaha, maybe even get some suggestions along with the ones that we'll be providing them. Also, there are simple touches that maybe some people won't understand if they come and visit the Airbnb. But if you guys ever come and check it out, you'll understand the simple touches that I did in this place as such as the vintage velvet chairs that we put in here and just some of the other things that you've seen along the whole process of this makeover. So as always, I would love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you haven't already seen all of the videos up until this point in the Airbnb makeover, be sure and check out our playlist down below. We are just so excited with how far this place has come over the past over a year and just so thankful for you guys for supporting us through it all this place is almost ready so next week we are going to be doing final final touches and getting ready for our very first guest so be sure and get subscribed down below so that you can also be the first person who sees this booking on airbnb wouldn't that be awesome all right thanks guys for watching and i'll see you on the flip side